Now, I've spoken with a lot of parents over the years. And one thing that has been repeated over and over again, at some point in your parenting journey, you become stupid. You forget everything. You, you used to be smart, and then you become stupid, and you know absolutely nothing. From what I've heard from those who have, have raised children to adulthood, eventually you become smart again, and eventually you know things again. But there is that period of time where, at least in the perspective of your children, you know absolutely nothing. And I can attest to this because I've gone through that phase. And I didn't think my parents knew a darn thing. There is one incident in particular that I can remember where I got into an argument with my mom. And it, to, to set the tone, to set the picture, I was about around 18 years old. You know, I was a legal adult. I was a man. And we were getting ready for something at church. And my mom was getting some last minute things together in the kitchen. And, you know, in the bustle of everything, she tells me, go start the car. I don't know what went through my mind. But in that moment right then, I did not like that command. I didn't like that she was telling me what to do. I mean, I was an adult. I deserved respect. And so I made it known to her I did a terrible job at communicating it. What I wanted to say was, I would appreciate it if you would ask rather than tell me. I feel like I'm an adult and I, I deserve that level of respect. How it came out was, no, I don't like people telling me what to do. Her response was, well, you better get used to it because that's life. And it did not go very well from there. It all went downhill, and it, it ended up, I got grounded in a whole bunch of other things. But it just goes to, to reinforce what we've been talking about, the importance of relationships. How we interact with one another is important, and it is one of our most valuable assets if we will use it properly. We've been talking about how in this world we have what we call common sense. Look out for number one. Do what you need to do. Take what you can get because nobody else is going to give it to you. And in the short term, that works out okay. In the short term, it might get you what you want, but in the long run, it's not going to get you where you want to go. In the long run, you need something else. You need God's wisdom, what we've been calling uncommon sense where you can see the big picture, where you can see really where you want to go, and while in the immediate it may seem like this is what I should do, God's uncommon sense goes counter to what we want to do right now in, the, in this moment, and it keeps eternity in its proper perspective. And we've been looking at, at how to manage these relationships with God's wisdom and God's uncommon sense, and we started off by looking at relationships in general. And we said in our relationships in general, we need to be encouraging to one another, we need to be expressing gratitude to one another, and then there's one idea that is carried over from each and every relationship, and that is this idea of submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. And when we first hear the word submit, we tend to think of a hierarchy. Well, if I submit to you, then that means that you are over me, that you are in charge of me. And it gets kind of weird if I'm supposed to submit to you and you're supposed to submit to me. And so we look deeper into this word submit. And while it has that idea of a, a hierarchy, what we said was when it comes to our relationships with one another, this idea to submit what it really means is, is a voluntary giving in. What it means is, is cooperating with one another. What it means is choosing to carry the burdens of another person. That's what it means to submit to one another. And we looked at that. We looked at it with regard to the one that everybody hates. Wives, submit to your husbands. 
And we looked at it with regard to the husbands and their duty, their responsibility to love their wives as themselves, to love their wives as Christ loved the church, and to carry her burdens, to submit in that way. And last week, we started talking about the relationship between slaves and masters, or in the more modern term, um, employees and employers, those that we work for. And while, they're, while we are told to submit in those relationships, there was an extra command. For, for those who have somebody over them, there was the command to obey. And that command is carried forward this week, as we continue looking in the book of Ephesians, chapter 6. Now, at the beginning of chapter 6, where we've come from, Paul got done talking about the, the general relationships, and then he talked about the wives submit to your husbands, then he talked about the husband's responsibilities in that marriage and in the household, and from that, he, he continues in this line of, of familial relationships, and we get to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1, where it says, children, obey your parents in the Lord because this is right. Now again, we have that command to obey. And just as before, it's the exact same word. That exact same word, as we said, what it means is it means to hear, to listen, but not only listen, but to do, to put it into action. They tell you to do something, and you do it. There might be a little bit of nuance in there, but that's the gist of it. To obey is to hear and to do. And the reason that they're told to do this, children, obey your parents in the Lord. Why? Because it is right. That is a terrible reason. I hate to say it, but it's true. If somebody tells me, you need to do this, and I say, why? And they say, well, because it's just the right thing to do. That doesn't make me want to do it anymore. I, I, in fact, I instinctually want to push against it. I mean, this is, people have trouble with the church sometimes because we, we tend to focus on the rules. And I've, I've told you before, it's not about the rules. It's about relationship. But we focus on the rules because rules are easy. And we say, this is how you're supposed to live. This is what you're supposed to do. And they say, why? And we say, well, just because. Because that's the right thing to do. And it doesn't, it doesn't resonate well with most people. You know, we said a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine to go down. You may not like the command, but if you can at least understand why, it can help you to, to follow even though you may not like it. Fortunately, there is a lot more to this. In fact, if, if we dig into this word right, it's more than just, well, because I said so. If we look at this word right, if we, if we go back to the, the Greek word, what we see is it's this idea of, of righteousness. Children, obey your parents in the Lord because it is his righteousness. Because it is in accordance with, with God's commands because it is a part of God's wisdom and God's uncommon sense because it's going to set you on the right path. And the following verses flesh that out for us and explain it a little better, saying, honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise so that it may go well with you and that you may have a long life in the land. In case you're wondering, that is a near direct verbatim quote from Exodus chapter 20. That is from the Ten Commandments. This is one of the Ten Commandments, the fifth one to be exact. Honor your father and mother. And again, a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. Why should you honor your father and mother? Why should you obey your parents? Because, as it says so that it will go well with you and that you may have a long life in the land. This is the command that God gave to the children of Israel as they were getting ready to enter the promised land. And it's the same thing he's telling us now. Listen to your parents because it's going to go better for you. 
Now I know, as you look at your parents, any of us, when we are children and we look at our parents, what do we see? We see big people. We see adults. We see mom. We see dad. That's what we see when we look at our parents. And they've been that way our entire life. And so we tend to think that that's how they've always been. But the truth is, your parents haven't always been that big person. Your parents haven't always been mom or dad. There was a time when they were little. There was a time when they went through all those things that you're going through. All those struggles that you are going through, they have been there. From generation to generation, it may look a little bit different, but the problems, the issues are all the same. And they have been through it. Sometimes they made the right choice. They were faced with what you are looking at right now, and they made a choice, and it turned out great. And they want to share that with you. They, they found this is a good way to go, and they want to help you to make that same decision. They want to help you to, to choose what is right so that you can have all of those successes, so that you can have all of those benefits that they have already experienced. But also sometimes they did not choose the right path. There were times when they made a bad choice. They didn't listen to their parents. And they had to pay the consequences. Things fell apart and it got really bad for a while. And they don't want you to have to do that same thing. They don't want you to experience all of that hurt, all of that pain, they don't want you to have to go through all of that if we can prevent it at the very beginning. You know, they say that a smart person learns from their mistakes. But a wise person learns from other people's mistakes. That's your parents' desire for you. You may not understand it. You may not get where they're coming from. You may think that they're just trying to kill all of your fun. But the truth is, they felt that pain and they're trying to spare you. So listen to your parents. I know I have an 18 year old and absolutely love her to death. She has no idea how much I love her. But she's made some mistakes. She's done some things that I wish that she hadn't done. And she's learned some hard lessons. And I can foresee, if I can look into the future, I can foresee that in 10, maybe 15 years from now, I'm going to get a phone call, a message, a text, some sort of conversation where she is going to tell me, you were right. It probably won't be those words. I'm sure it won't be those words. But it's going to be that same idea. It's going to be that same idea that I didn't understand what was going on at the time. I didn't understand what you were trying to do. But I get it now. I see it now. I see it from your perspective. And I know that what you were doing was you were trying to help me. You were trying to save me from the pain. Am I just saying that? Because of wishful thinking? Because I like to be told that I'm right? Maybe a little bit. But I know that that's going to happen because that's what I did to my parents. Because I came to that realization. Much too late, probably, but I came to that realization that everything they were trying to stop me from doing, everything that I hated that they were doing to me and, and making me do, it had a purpose and it had a reason. And they did it to help me. Your parents know way more than you think that they do. You may think that they've gone stupid in this time, but the truth is their knowledge and their wisdom has remained the same. It is you and your perspective that has changed. 
So children, obey your parents because it's going to turn out way better for you. They are trying to help you. So listen to their advice. Heed their advice and follow their directions. Now, this is the last message in this sermon series. And so at this point, you should kind of know how this whole formula goes. We've looked at, at the children and children need to obey their parents because it is right, because it's in alignment with God's wisdom and God's uncommon sense. And now we flip it around and now we look at the other side of that relationship. In verse 4, fathers, don't stir up anger in your children, but bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Now you may be wondering, why does it say fathers? Why doesn't it say mothers? Don't stir up anger in your children. Why doesn't it just say parents? Don't stir up anger in your children. In some translations, they make it more gender neutral and they say parents. But the word that is translated here, over 90% of the time, whenever it is translated, it means the male father figure, the male parent, the dad. Now, why is that? We went over that a few weeks ago. Men, you are the head of your household. You are in charge. It says it right there just a few verses back. You are in charge. You have been given authority over your household. You have been given power in your household. And as the great man Ben, ben Parker said, with great power comes great responsibility. It is your responsibility to raise your children. It is your responsibility to manage your household. And so if your wife is stirring up anger in your children, that is your responsibility. You will be held to account. It is your responsibility how your children are raised. Delegate it to somebody else if you want, but it is still your responsibility. Now, I said that I had an argument with my mom. And I still think that the, the basis of my complaint is still valid. Even all these years later, I think that my desire to be treated with dignity and respect, to be treated like an adult, I think that I was completely justified in that. I also think that my mom was right. As her child, I had the responsibility to follow what she said. But I think that, I think neither of us handled that situation the best. I failed to communicate, but I think where my mom went wrong, again, she was right, I should have listened. But where she went wrong was that she didn't listen. When we are raising children, when, when they're little, I mean, they don't know anything. They, they, they don't understand. And you can try and reason with them, but many times it's like talking to a brick wall. And you can try and lead them and help them to understand, but they just don't get it. And so when they are little, you kind of have to just make them do what they're supposed to do. You kind of have to, they don't want to take a bath. They don't want to brush their teeth. They don't want to go to bed, but you are the parent. And so you have to make them do that. You parent by authority. I am big. You are small. I'm going to make you do this because it's the right thing. And that is completely the way that it should be when they're little. But as they get older, as they learn, as they are more able to understand, your parenting style has to change. Because, correct me if I'm wrong, the goal of raising kids is that they don't always live with you. The goal is to have an empty nest. If they live with you your entire life, something is wrong, maybe on both parts. The goal of a parent is to push their children out to make them independent. Your, your job is to work yourself out of a job. 
And so as they get older, your responsibility is to give up that power, to give up that authority. And it's going to happen one way or another. If you continue to hold on to it and you continue to, to exert your authority, the time is going to come when they don't have to listen anymore. And they're going to just stop listening and go on their way. The wise parent, along that journey, along that 18 plus years, the wise parent will start off as the authoritative parent, but over the years will gradually slowly begin to release that and begin to parent by relationship. Not just telling them this is what's right, this is what you have to do, but showing them and helping them to understand why. Helping them to understand the, the pros and cons and how to think for themselves. That's where I think my mom went wrong. Don't stir up anger in your children, but bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Your job as a parent, in the beginning, you have to, you have to be the authoritarian. But as time progresses, if you still want them to come back to you and seek your advice and listen to you after they don't have to listen to you anymore then you have to start giving them that and teaching them that early on. Training them in the instruction of the Lord. Helping them to understand. Because they're going to be adults someday. Some of you already know that. They are going to be adults someday. And someday they'll get it. That's the hope at least. They may go off and be crazy for a while, and, and the, the hope, the prayer is that they will get it in their heads, that they will come back around. That is the prayer of every parent. But to get to that point, you're going to have to cooperate with them. You're going to have to choose to, to, to give in, to carry their burdens. If only we had a really good word that meant to, to cooperate, to, to voluntarily give in, to, to carry the burdens of somebody else, kind of like submit. Parents, submit to your children. You are still the authority figure. You are still in charge. But if you want them to understand, if you want to, to bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord, then you're going to have to learn to submit to your children and to carry their burdens, especially as they grow older. Because that's been the command this whole time, hasn't it? Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Whether it's in our marriage relationships, whether it's in the parent-child relationship, whether it's in your, your worker and manager relationship, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. That's where it all begins. Out of reverence for Christ, submitting to Him. Because if you can't submit to Christ, it's going to be a lot harder to submit to anyone else. In fact, that's what we have going on this morning. We have a couple people who want to publicly confess that they are submitting their lives to Christ through the sacrament of baptism. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, God, we praise you. We praise you for the new life that we have in you. God, we praise you for who you are and what you have done for us. And God, I pray that, that in our lives, in our relationships, God, we would lean upon your wisdom. That we would lean upon your uncommon sense that that we would keep eternity in mind and, and seek after you so that we don't fall into the, the traps and the pitfalls of this world that tells us it's all about me. But God, may we serve you wholeheartedly. So God, I pray that you go with us this week. God, bless our relationships. Help us to 
to, to keep eternity in mind and serve with your wisdom. We pray this in your holy name, Jesus. Amen. God bless you guys, and we'll see you next week.